opening question i want to raise today is did thyro care disrupt the indian diagnostic industry i always believe mba is about classroom experience when you actually throw up a case study in a class there is a protagonist there is a situation there is an industry and the student is put into the midst of that context yes go ahead so thyro care concentrated on a very uh, specific segment they did not uh, as such possess any threat to their competitors where srl and uh, athlab had 2.5 and 2.4% market share thyro care was at 0.8% they had a really unique working model i don't think they were able to disrupt the industry uh, that's interesting you're talking about model yes so what do we mean by a model or a business model is the point that we are going to actually come to yeah thanks neha you made some good points anybody else would like to add on yes i always believe that you know everybody has an opinion they focus uh, majorly on disorders compared to diseases they focus more on volumes volumes okay then when they come into the class they're all familiar with the facts of the case but the issues that start coming up they were very certain that they don't want to do everything they decided to focus only on the downstream business and they did not cater too much on the procurement part right i always believe each student is very unique in terms of his experience what he has gone through the subjects he has studied when the same issue that goes into each one of them what is internalized and what they talk is quite distinctive i mean that brings about very different perspectives in the class you get uh, the flavor of different perspectives coming from different people it gives you a different perspective it opens up new areas of thought that you probably wouldn't have you know come up with by yourself they yeah. try to identify what exactly the customers were looking for they were looking for accuracy they were looking for transparency yeah. and they pinpointedly picked out those things and they have put that in their model and that's basically what gave them the edge excellent points in the sense we are talking about the kind of structure of the industry itself at that point in time and how the mega trends were evolving because thyrocare was not the first mover there were other players in the market the competitors may have not focused there but he was able to bring together pick up those mega trends and started building capabilities from that perspective all of that were coming together and he was able to pull that together great points yes go ahead see my philosophy is there is no right or a wrong answer there are range of payoffs there are range of trade offs in each of these options what eventually happened in that case sometimes become even secondary they had a competitive advantage in terms of cost first of all the right. audience that they were targeting is very very price sensitive at the time the competitors were charging 500 for one test they came up with the test for 100 rupees the whole focus is on if you were there what are all the issues and how would it impact you and what could be option 1 2 or 3 for you to make those decisions but because they only focused on one segment what happened was that uh, bigger players could come into the market and it was imitable at the end of the day yeah. so that was one of the biggest risks that they didn't play by extending their capability so i i think we're coming to a very important point here now why getting focused on one single segment putting all your resources it's like putting all the eggs into one basket right so the competitive rivalry is heating up there more the model that was inimitable at one point in time is slowly becoming imitable so those kind of issues are actually coming into the picture um so we know that you know what happened eventually with thyrocare they eventually sold it to pharmacy yeah, yeah correct yeah we know that you know they were not able to figure out a way to stay in the business for long uh my question is is there any other way that they could have done that you know right so like what could have been done that they need not have sold off right yeah. so any any quick points on that from this side you would like to add on everybody has an opinion and uh, there is always a resistance to air that opinion which is what the problem is there are a lot of meek spectators in the class generally if you see it, there's a group of people always talking and in strategy it's important for people to express their opinion there's nothing right or nothing wrong but how you anchor yourself in certain kind of theoretical concepts and debate from there becomes important and for which i think expressing talking articulating communicating becomes very important and i do that i encourage them to speak and i'm more interested in people who don't open their mouth and make them talk so sometimes you get some of the best kind of points from those kind of people towards the end of the class when they open up so what could they have done in order to avoid selling it off to farmies i think uh, a planned exit is a good strategy 
in itself right like uh, he created uh, maximum value for the shareholders and he exited uh, the firm he sold the firm thus creating high valuation for the shareholders just like most of the athletes retire at their peak career of yeah. their time so yeah. i think that was a correct move other than roger federer yeah I would like to uh, say that uh, leaving it all together wasn't a good option at all. Yeah. Because already when the other competitors weren't having that big of an EBITDA, uh, Velumani and Tharukar already were at 40 to 50 percent of. Still, he was quite high. Yeah. So they yeah. were they were having decent amount of uh, cash flow that they yeah. could have invested. Yeah. Uh, instead of just leaving the game all together, because I also think one of the major advantages that helped uh, Velumani and Tharukar to scale to such big advantages. Were that no big companies such as a Reliance or a Tata were there in that past 20 years. Right. If they might have been there, Thyrocare might have been dissipated at the beginning itself. Companies need also take into consideration what they do not want to do. So that was one of the main things that I actually learned from this strategic course that you need not have all, all the weapons in your arsenal. There are certain weapons that you need to sharpen, sharpen to the best of your capabilities, and that's how you uh, cut yourself a piece of the pie. So Ishan's point is, uh, I'm, I'm just able to figure out something very interesting here. Was there any other option other than selling it to Pharmacy, or do you get into a strategic alliance with Pharmacy? End of the day, what Pharmacy is trying to do is to build the capability gap which it has. So what was missing in their Delta missing was only the diagnostics. They could have actually got into a strategic alliance and actually plugged that for Pharmacy to create value for them. Yes. Go ahead, Amritullah. Uh, one very qualitative component that I would like to bring to the table is that when we look at Velumani's character or attitude, right, he, he basically made it look like he is the company rather than trying to look at it as a separate legal entity. He kind of considered that it was his and only he had to run it. So when he lost the vision for the future to the company, yeah. he basically went on to sell it rather than... So more specifically, that itself was the strength for 25 years, which became the entire weakness. Yeah going forward for the next 10 years. Most of the founders or people who run the company always think that they are going to remain very strong in that industry and they act more defensively to keep their market position. In case of Thyrocare, I think the humility of the founder to understand the kind of competition that has been setting in. As competitive rivalry starts setting in an industry, the ability to make super profits is steadily dropping because the model is getting imitated and the valuation of the company is steadily declining. The kind of competitive advantage what he had in, in terms of ability to manage the cost low and keep the organization very frugal and simple itself became a kind of a competitive rigidity for him to move beyond and establish the next level of business in the diagnostics. And I think the decision that he had taken was to create the best value for shareholders and that's the kind of value which the students take away from this as well. Great points. So uh, guys, I think from the discussions what we have had today, I think there are quite a lot of key takeaways that we are getting out of this. Any industry is constantly getting more and more competitive. The ability to make super profits is steadily declining. The number of players are actually getting consolidated. Leadership is not merely CXO or a CEO. I mean, there are a lot of dynamics from the emotional side of it, from the kind of uh, behavioral side of it, from the functional side of it. And that's why I say that it's important that, you know, more than hardworking managers, we need smart managers who are able to look at the kind of data, integratively think, articulate and communicate well. I think the way the kind of curriculum and the courses are designed, they are uh, well equipped to do that. Managers need to create value for every stakeholder and balance the interest of the stakeholders so that everybody gets value. It complicates or it makes the role of the manager much more difficult, but that's, that's the kind of order of the day, right? Thank you.